you're looking to become a psychologist, then let this be your guide. With this podcast at your side, you'll be on your way to being qualified. It's the Aspiring Psychologist Podcast with Dr. Marianne Trent. Hi, welcome along to this episode of the Aspiring Psychologist podcast uh, with me, Dr. Marianne Trent. Today, we're going to be thinking about using supervision and the supervisory relationship. Now, of course, as an aspiring psychologist, um, it's really important that we have got some sort of supervision which helps us feel contained, that helps us also ideally, in a really ideal world, advance our skills across, you know, a pretty broad skill set. So I have to say that I've always been reasonably fortunate with my psychology supervision and that I've been able to use it and shape it to get, you know, to get the best out of me and to serve my clients and the service as well as I can. Um, and also, you know, to I get basically I always used to think of as an assistant psychologist as a way of helping, you know, the qualified psychology team do their job optimally. So in very much the way um, that I run my private business now, if the job doesn't actually need to be done by me, um, it can be done with someone with skills um, in a certain area, then actually there's a school of thought that says I ought not to be doing it because it's not the best value for money. Um, so I don't have... Um, I don't have any assistant psychologists on my um, payroll currently, other than um, writing blog posts, which I will pay you £15 um, to write for me. If that's interesting to you, do give me a shout. Um, but, you know, I recognise that I'm a good writer. You know, I enjoy writing. I always have. Um, but, um, you know, it doesn't really make sense for me to write that stuff myself when actually I can use, you know, that hour of my time um, in a much more, um, you know, lucrative way for me and in an effective way, hopefully, for my clients. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in that, do give me a shout. Um, but anyway, I digress. So using supervision um, is a way for helping to make sure that I was supporting and that you would be supporting, you know, the needs of that qualified psychology team to help them do their job more optimally. So I know when I was um, an assistant psychologist, it meant that I was doing kind of some of the audit stuff and um, maybe helping to, you know, pre-score up some of the psychology measures and questionnaires um, I had a job um, in a forensic setting where there was quite a lot of challenging and sexually inappropriate behaviour. And so I would um, log all of that and keep it in a database. I made a wicked Excel spreadsheet. I love a bit of Excel um, and, you know, used that to be able to generate trends and then to be able to write uh, reports for people's um, CPA reviews. So um, that was, I, you know, I learned so much there. Um, and going to ward rounds, um, either with the psychologist or um, as a psychologist kind of deputy, um, to go and feedback anything um, or to, um, you know, to um, try and contribute um, as much as I could with my my burgeoning um, psychology experience but me and meetings are still not great you know long meetings oh I find them a bit of a struggle um, so yeah if you're in in that same camp um, welcome to my world but anyway so using supervision um, effectively it's it's kind of important that you feel safe um, and a way that you can help think about developing the best possible relationship is to think about um, contracting. And that's something that I've always done um, in my own supervision. 
but also when I'm supervising um, other members of staff too. And you might be like, I don't really know what a supervision contract is. Um, and if you'd like to download my example of a supervision contract that you might want to, to use to shape your thinking and to shape your conversations with you know, either current supervisors or new supervisors, then do go to www.goodthinkingpsychology.co.uk forward slash supervision. So www.goodthinkingpsychology.co.uk forward slash supervision. And what I will do is you will automatically then be sent um, my supervision contract um, and I hope you find that really useful because it has been superbly useful for me you know across my career um, so I hope you find the same too but it gives you the opportunity to, to take away that ambiguity to really know you know what happens if our relationship gets a bit tricky so it's got conversations to support that as well you know it helped me understand what the expectations are of me during supervision um and just to check in you know with the fact that i know what i'm being asked to do and what what i'm expecting of others um, in supervision um it can also be useful um to think about you know how protected your supervisor's time is. So um, I think for me, it's important to think about developing your distress tolerance, but it also takes time to work out what is appropriate, you know, distress tolerance and containment. So containment, um, in case you're not sure, is kind of the ability to keep stuff together without it leaking out every now and then. So I know I was probably quite annoying um, in my first assistant post because anything that cropped up to me, I'd be like emailing it um, and asking it as a question. But over time, um, I have got better and more contained at holding that unless it's issues of imminent risk um, to myself or the service user or the staff team because of course we ought not to be keeping that um, to the next available supervision um, and if you're like well why not it's because um, of course we have a duty of care to protect and so if you are concerned about someone's well-being safety um, then we need to pass that on and that might involve making safeguarding referrals or contacting emergency services whatever needs to happen but again this is a useful conversation to have with your supervisor um, if you haven't had it already you know what do I do if something is so big that I can't keep it you know for the next supervision what what are the policies and procedures you know do you have I know that you know you might be really busy and that you've obviously told me that um you know that your office hours are such and such and you know because some supervisors are very bounded um and some are obviously of course so busy that they don't really have capacity to be supervising junior members of the team but of course there was a duty of care to offer supervision but supervision for me isn't just about one hour a week you know or one hour a fortnight or whatever it looks like for you um i really enjoy having um being a supervisor and having that ability to help shape someone and so whenever I have had someone um, as my supervisee, I've made sure that I have time for them to be able to, you know, not just have supervision, but to be able to come along to things that I'm doing and to help advance their skills, you know, so to observe assessments. And, you know, sometimes when I was working in, um, you know, family service where there was a screen, sometimes patients didn't mind if, um, you know, if junior members of staff sat and observed the session through the window you know some did of course and you might need to pick um, who you ask about that but if you are wanting to you know increase your um, experience and especially if, it's, if it is a family session you know um, it can be useful to have 
an observer to be able to talk that through with afterwards. So is that something you could offer? Um, but yeah, uh, I also used to do the very cringy thing of um, recording myself um, and the client on audio um, during sessions and bringing that to supervision so that we could listen to bits, which I promise you feels horrid. Um, but you get over the sound of your own voice pretty quickly um, to be able to advance your skills. Um, so, you know, so if your supervisor doesn't have a chance to to observe you or can't sit in a room and obviously it's not always appropriate, would a client let you film some bits so that you can go through that um, with them? So um, but of course, um, I didn't do loads of um, therapy before I got on to my doctoral course. Uh, so I've done a bit and trust me, oh, when I look back on it now, it was cringe worthy and I say a bit more about that in my story in the clinical psychologist collective book so check that out if you haven't already um, but yes yeah, psychology supervision should feel safe you know safe to be yourself safe to be able to to say I don't really know what the next step is. I don't really know if I feel that that confident or that sure about how to get this result or how to do this. And you know, if you're doing some neuropsych and you actually don't really know you could do with a refresher on scoring or interpreting, then it's really important that you feel safe enough to be able to raise your hand in supervision and ask for you know some more more explicit hand over hand guidance or examples so from time in that supervision to go through and problem solve um, and sometimes in supervision I will you know role play um, stuff that's gone on with me um, and clients to be able to demonstrate that um, with uh, with one with someone that I'm supervising so that might be another way that you could ask for your supervisor to help shape you is to ask them to do a little bit of role play with you uh, we're not talking about dressing up here um, but just to say you know I'm not really sure how I'd explain that to a client could you maybe do that with me how you think you would usually do that or how it would be appropriate for me to do that so that I can just really get my head around how to do that. Um, and, you know, when you've done a supervision contract, you know that it's OK to ask those kinds of questions. So um, I know that in the past I have worked with someone who kind of wasn't OK with me using supervision in that way and asking questions like that and that they felt that made me look like I was not really good enough. But actually, what I've been able to work through is actually that's kind of an erroneous viewpoint for me because it's so far outside everything else that I've ever experienced about supervision. That actually, I think this was just a, a case of us not being that well attuned. And that does crop up in supervision relationships from time to time. I'm just going to take a short break for um, a little advert and I'll be back um, very soon. If you're looking to become a psychologist, then let this be your guide. Filled with lessons and experience that will help you get qualified. So come and take a look. It's right here in this book. It's the clinical psychologist. Hi, I'm Max, and I work as an assistant psychologist in the Learning Disability Service in West Yorkshire. Like most people working in psychology, I'm slowly but surely working myself up to that seemingly impossible goal of getting onto the clinical doctorate. 
With that end goal in mind, I thought I'd have a look at what's out there and see what books might be helpful for this. I came across Marianne's book, The Clinical Psychologist Collective, and decided that this would be a great buy for me to help me on the journey. I found Marianne's book really informative and most insightful. I especially liked how the stories reassured me that you don't need to be academically perfect to become a psychologist and that as long as you have good interpersonal skills, such as compassion and empathy, you will get there. I would highly recommend this book to all aspiring psychologists and also those who want to know a bit more about the world of clinical psychology and maybe want to work in that field one day. What happens if, um, you know, if a supervision relationship just isn't really meeting your needs? Do you feel like it would be okay to ask, you know, to change that, to amend it, to try and strengthen and improve your relationship? Um, Could you even, if things have broken down, ask about a new supervisor? And it might be that you know, there's not anyone in your immediate department where that's possible. But if you're in um, an NHS trust or, you know, private um, hospital, it might be that there's someone else in a different department who would be able to able to support you in that. Um, and it might be that you might need some some support from HR to help you to improve your relationship. Or if you feel like you're being treated unfairly, that might be something that you wanted to speak about with HR. It's really, really tricky because the power imbalance, which can feel like it's around um, in this profession. Because, of course, I recall very well that, you know, you want someone to be able to to think that you're good at the job and that they think that you'd make a good, um, you know, qualified psychologist and that it's really useful to have their reference. And so, you know, sometimes we can just have that pressure to think that we need to just keep plodding on but you do matter you are important and if if your needs are not being met or you're being treated really unfairly then it's okay to raise that so someone recently had said that their supervisor had said they didn't really have time to write their declin site um, reference so could they just write it themselves and that just made my heart hurt you know that's not okay You know, if you don't have time to do that for someone, then you don't have time to be a supervisor. Um, You know, someone shouldn't be writing their own reference. And it's also how valid that then is. You know, if across the country people have written their own reference, that's not very that's not very honest. You know, it's not very not really very fair um, to the perspective clients that you might be working with if you do then get on to a clinical course because you know I can say I'm great but actually what would be better is if my my supervisor was able to demonstrate actually I am all right at what I you know say that I do Um, and you know whether they're able to weave in any kind of you know feedback from clients to help strengthen that example of why I am good at what I do so it's not it's not an easy situation unless you have like a golden supervisor. But, you know, it's important that you're able to feel like it's OK to be yourself um, and to use that supervision as a safe space. If you have got any questions or feedback or you'd like me to say more about anything, please do um, get in touch. And of course, do um, bear in mind that um free resource that I mentioned for um, you know the example supervision contract which you can get hold of a copy by going to www 
goodthinkingpsychology.co.uk forward slash supervision. Um, I hope you find this super useful. If you do, please subscribe, um, like, consider giving it a review, a rating, all of those lovely things. And I will look forward to catching up with you on our next episode soon. Take care. If you're looking to become a psychologist Then let this be your guide With this podcast at your side You'll be on your way to being qualified It's the Aspiring Psychologist Podcast With Dr. Marianne Trent